Hi everyone, my name is Stacey Reynolds and I'm excited to share with you our study entitled A Step Wedge Cluster Randomized Trial to Decrease Central Line Associated Bloodstream Infections or CLABSIs through re-implementing chlorhexidine gluconate bathing. CLABSIs negatively impact patient outcomes and are a major quality focus among hospitals. Despite strong evidence showing that chlorhexidine gluconate or CHG bathing helps reduce CLABSI risk, adoption of this practice per evidence-based standards is poor. In two hospitals in the southeastern United States, CLABSI rates were above the internal targets. In a review of baseline data, CLABSI prevention bundle compliance was high, but CHG bathing compliance was low. As such, improving the adoption of CHG bathing was a primary focus for quality improvement. This study was conducted in 14 units that admit patients at high risk for CLABSI. Our team included three PhD prepared nurses, three quality nurses, and two statisticians. Unit-based CLABSI champions served as data collectors. We used a PDSA quality improvement approach to assess the extent of the problem. We involved nursing staff in informal discussions to understand contributors to poor adoption of CHG bathing using a fishbone diagram. From these discussions, nurses acknowledged a lack of knowledge of the evidence-based CHG bathing protocol from AHRQ and had a poor understanding of the benefits of CHG bathing. Findings from this analysis were shared with the CLABSI champions and implementation strategies were chosen to help mitigate these specific barriers. We developed a step wedge cluster randomized trial to re-implement CHG bathing, which was implemented May through September 2019. Data collection included CHG bathing documentation and process compliance, nurses' knowledge and perceptions of CHG bathing, and CLABSI rates. Implementation strategies of educational outreach visits and audit and feedback were used. Units received weekly audit feedback with run charts of their CHG compliance data. For the educational outreach visits, a member of the team provided in-services on the AHRQ process. As this was an implementation science study, units were able to modify the interventions to fit the culture of their unit. For example, some units preferred the educational outreach visits to be completed during staff meetings, whereas other units preferred more informal rounding visits. Immediately following the intervention, CHG bathing process compliance significantly improved, as did nurses' knowledge and perceptions of CHG bathing. Documentation compliance and CLABSI rates improved, although were not significant. Unfortunately, right after the intervention phase, the manufacturer announced a nationwide back order of CHG cloths, which led to a slight spike in CLABSI rate. 12 months after the intervention, booster sessions were completed showing sustained improvements in documentation and process compliance. Also 12 months after the intervention, we found a statistically significant reduction in CLABSIs as noted on the control chart. In October 2019, one hospital built an e-reminder in the electronic health record. Integrating this reminder into the nurse's workflow may have contributed to the sustained increase in documentation compliance. For others considering a similar study, there are practices we would suggest doing. First, gain leadership support early by providing an overview of the study and answering questions to local nursing leaders. Also, if using educational outreach visits, we recommend having additional experts to assist as this is a time-consuming yet very effective intervention. As you can see from our findings, this study positively impacted patient outcomes by improving compliance with evidence-based care and decreasing CLABSI rates. Additionally, staff nurses were able to contribute to nurse-led research, which helps with their own professional development. Although the official study is complete, we are continually trying to improve our processes. After the study, we conducted a patient focus group to understand CHG bathing barriers from the patient's perspective. Main takeaways included the need to provide detailed patient education on the rationale for CHG bathing and nurses providing assistance to the hospitalized patient during their bath. We have implemented several interventions to help mitigate these barriers. I hope you found this information helpful. Feel free to check out our findings that have been published in Implementation Science or feel free to reach out to me directly. Thank you.